For the 2024 F1 season, we had not one, but two team rebrands. Wow, two new opportunities for an exciting team identity, some on-point graphic design, and some hot new logos. Oh, okay, well, there you go. There's the new logos. Just a little piece of F1 news I thought I should share. I don't think it has anything to do with the video today. What are we talking about, though? Oh, yes, the worst F1 team logos you've ever seen. Nothing to do with these, though, I don't think. I actually wrote the script one year ago when another team, Haas, unveiled their new title sponsor logo. This logo I like. However, this is not the official race team logo anymore. This is. <sighs> It's mutated. It's all lopsided now. I don't like this at all. All of this has inspired me to look back over the history of F1 team logos. Because while I can tolerate corporate capitalist takeovers of my beloved sport sucking out any and all passion, I draw the line at bad graphic design. Team logos tell us a lot about the organizations behind the cards we see on screen in Formula 1. They're an easy recognizable graphic that fans can make out in an instant and, when designed well, they can tell us a little bit about the character of the different teams. This tells us that Mercedes is precise and classy. This tells us that Ferrari is historic and proud. This tells us that Red Bull likes to fire animals into the sun? I don't really know what the big yellow circle in the middle was meant to be, honestly. But logos are not always as well designed and pleasing to look at as these. Some logos are slapped on with a little bit less care. Some real doing your homework while the teacher is collecting in kind of jobs. After all, F1 teams are engineering and sporting teams, not graphic designers. Smaller teams from history wouldn't have had huge marketing departments. They were just some guys in a shed and they weren't afraid to show it. And so it is kind of fair enough that they wouldn't have been the best logos you've ever seen. Then again, they didn't need to be this bad. This is the top tier of motorsport after all, and so we absolutely still can make fun of them. I was curious to explore the world of team logos and see what kind of variety history had to offer. But not like all of history, you know, that's a lot of history. So instead, I decided to look back from 2024 to 1990, 35 seasons. It can't be that many logos, right? Like 30, 40 tops? It was 150 logos. I took my list of 150 logos and studied them for days. I looked over every tiny detail, curve and color to see exactly what made a good logo in Formula One and therefore what makes a bad one. It's important to remember that today we're used to seeing team logos a lot as they're on screen all the time on the in-race graphics. This means that logos today have to have a nice small version which can be easily recognized when it's in this tiny box. And it also helps if your team has distinctive colors. It is possible to go too far with the distinctive colors though, looking at you Minecraft F1 team Sauber. This wasn't always the case though. It feels like team logos have been on screen forever, but actually they were only added in 2018. Before this, team logos served a bit of a different purpose. The emphasis was much more heavily on the team name and also the livery. That being said, logos were still important. You would see it on team kit when the camera panned over the pit wall, it would be on driver overalls, and of course, how are you meant to sell that sweet, sweet merchandise if you don't slap your logo all over it? One other thing to consider for this video is that logos exist in and of the time that they come from. That is to say, just because fashions move on doesn't automatically mean that everything old is bad. Take a look at this fond metal logo. If a team unveiled this today, it would look like trash. However, considering this was used in 1991, actually, this was pretty reasonable for the time. The colors and the generic splash are an older style for sure, but it has some strengths. The font is strong. That's it. But, but, one thing is more than nothing. So with all of that in mind, let's look at the very worst logos the last 35 years have to offer. Better get those puke buckets ready because the ones at the top of this list are God. Awful. Bad logos can be bad for a number of reasons. The first and probably saddest reason are the missed opportunities. Teams that could have had something great, but tripped and dropped their chili all over the floor at the last minute. Looking at you, RB, for this downgrade. Let's take our number seven, Lotus Racing 2010. Any long-term fans of the sport or any fans of 
cars in general have probably heard the name Lotus. You probably even recognize their iconic logo. Lotus Racing joined the grid in 2010 and paid for a license to use the name Lotus. They didn't, however, pay for a license to use the logo. So instead, we got this. This looks like they used the My Team emblem creator from one of the Formula One games, or perhaps the emblem creator from Halo 3. This makes me sad. It's bland, it's flat, but most importantly, it's so close to being something great. Graphic design blue balls at its finest. While that logo came into being due to politics, effectively, this next one came to be for no reason at all. Also in 2010, Virgin bought a majority share in one of the other new entries on the grid and called it Virgin Racing. You are probably familiar with the Virgin brand. They do a lot of stuff and they use the exact same logo on every single thing they do. On planes, on gyms, on space rockets, always the exact same logo. So obviously they just use the same one again for F1, right? 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 I think you know where this is going. What is this? Why have you done this? Not only is this some random crap that no one recognizes, it doesn't even look good. This makes even less sense when you see the combines logo that was used for like websites and stuff. It has the original logo in it. Why didn't you use this one? This one has a big VR and then it says Virgin two other times. Just use this one. What the hell? <sighs> Throw it on the pile. While talking about things that are almost completely redundant, we do also have to mention everyone's favourite backmarker, Williams. Williams has been around for a long time. They've had some great logos through their history. This current one is fantastic. The one before that was memorable. They had this one back in the 90s when they were great. It's iconic. Love it. So tell me, Williams, why in 2006, for just one year, you made this. Are you running an accountancy firm? The year before, when they were still sponsored by BMW, they had this thing, which wasn't great, but it's fine. You could have just deleted the three letters from the start and used that. So why did you make this? Did you let Grandad loosen the design room? What happened? Literally one year later, they then moved to this and thank God, because literally anything is better than this law firm crap. Williams actually committed two sins with this logo, the first one being the horrible serif font, and the second one being the generic swoosh. 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 This was all the rage back in the 90s and noughties. What does it mean? It means nothing. What does it add? It adds nothing. Not all swooshes are bad, mind you. I think this one is pretty nifty. This one, though, I hate. In the bin with you. While we're looking at generic shapes, we have to talk about our number four. Arrows from the 1997 and 98 seasons. This was the logo. Just take a second to really soak that in. It's meant to be a quiver of arrows. It's not. This is trash. This is bad, guys. This art style I'm going to dub early Microsoft Word Core, and I am not here for it. Get it away from me. Speaking of just awful, I was genuinely blown away by this next logo. Eurobrun were a back market team from 1988 to 1990. You probably didn't see them much because most of the time they didn't even make it out of pre-qualifying. However, they did qualify for a couple of races which gave them a perfect opportunity to show off their world class logo. Look at that. I... This cannot be explained. What does the sun have to do with Formula One? Why did they split the team name up? Why is it so wide? It's so wide! This logo is so bad, it is actually genuinely hilarious. At first, when I was researching this, I didn't even think this one was real. The only links I could find were to a random JPEG on Pinterest, and so I thought maybe a fan made this, and it was like a high-concept shit post about the team. But then, but then, I found this photo of Claudio Langes. Look at that! He's wearing the logo! It was real! It was real! Eurobrun brings us nicely to the worst two logos out there. These ones are bad purely because they're just straight trash. The year that these ones are from does not matter. They were trash then, they are still trash now. They're both so awful that I find it difficult to decide which one is worst, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide down below. 
But just before we get to that, some honourable mentions that didn't make it onto the worst of all time list. Simtech looks like a VHS company, can't pinpoint why, but I hate it. LaRousse, try harder. HRT 2012. You had this, which was bad, and then you made it worse somehow. Fusahara Force India 2011. Too busy. These things here are little people holding hands, presumably falling to their death down a well. And also the whole thing is lopsided. Come on. Ferrari 2007. Too busy. Too many bevels. You skewed your own logo and also hidden cigarette sponsorship. Bad. Stop it. Bad. Stop. And finally, Andrea Moda. Just awful. I would also like to talk about the logo I mentioned at the top, Money Ram Haas 2023 to present. This doesn't go on the worst logos of all time list. It also doesn't quite make the honourable mentions, but they have ruined a great logo. We're used to title partners in Formula 1 completely butchering the names of teams. Aston Martin, cognizant Formula 1 team Aramco. Visa Cash App RB. Stake, Formula 1 team Kick Sauber. But that is to be expected in this world of hyper sponsorship. Put their logo next to yours, fine. Take them as a branding sponsor and use their logo or two. You know what, teams have been doing it for decades. It's not good, but it's exactly what we expect from you. But don't put their logo in your logo. Now it's completely inseparable. Considering Haas in particular has a rocky history with their title sponsors. <laughs> Sorry, my throat. Let me just one second. <sighs> there we go. Considering House has a history of signing the absolute worst sponsors known to mankind, you would think they would be a little bit cautious before completely, irreversibly tying themselves to one of them. At least with previous partnerships, they can at least pretend that they never existed at all. MoneyGram as a company is fine, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure it's just a relatively boring money transfer company. Probably unlikely for any massive controversies. But if anyone's gonna find them, it would be Hass. And so, without further ado, the two worst logos since 1990, 40 Corsa and a seller. These upset me. Firstly, a seller. Why is it so long? If you unstretch the thing, it makes it significantly better. And so, why did you make it so long? I don't understand. Also, the text logo looks okay without the circles around it. And so why? Why the circles? And why these colors for these circles? 40, on the other hand, this logo genuinely looks like a practical joke on the rest of the paddock. It looks like they handed this in as a dare. Again, another example of early Microsoft Word core. And every time I have to write those four words in my script, I die on the inside just a little bit. 40, to the 40 designer. If you're watching this, and I know that you are, you are a genuine psychopath. Seek help. While the 40 logo hurts me conceptually, I cannot deny that the Ocella logo is just horrendous aesthetically. I honestly cannot pick which one of these is the most worst because I become angry and a little bit unwell if I look at either of them for too long. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide down below number one most worst logo in Formula 1 since 1990. They'll be over in the pile if you want to have a better look at them. I'm not just going to leave you with these to ruin your day. I thought as we've taken a look at all the things that make a logo bad, we can also apply that knowledge to appreciate some of the good logos from F1's history. I've put together my top 10 of the last 35 years and I thought we'd have a quick run through to appreciate some of the teams that got it right. P10, the Sauber S. It's timeless. It does look a little bit like a mid-tier clothing brand, but I appreciate the uniqueness. Sauber have used this ever since they joined the sport in 1993 and they haven't changed it once. Got it right the first time, nice one. P9, Onyx, hell yeah boys, this thing is 80s as hell. They joined the sport in 1989, so still counts, and then they used this for their second season as well in 1990. The history of this team is shaky, and that's putting it lightly, but that's a story for another video. Despite all of that though, my god, did they have a cool logo. P8, the Minardi Crest. Minardi as a team were 
trash, but their logo went hard. This could be a football team, could be an Italian clothing brand. I like it. It's got a lion. Lion's got a sword. What more do you need? P7, McLaren's current logo. It's simple, it's effective. It is a swoosh, but my God, it's a good one. It's worth noting that the McLaren swoosh didn't always look like this. Back in the 90s, it was a bit more blocky and suspiciously similar to the logo of their title sponsor, Marlboro. That logo then evolved into the one we have today, so you could make the argument that it's a hidden cigarette sponsorship. You could make that argument. Just saying. P6, March. This thing is retro as hell. This looks like a brand I would trust to build a computer for me if it was, let's say, 1985. It in fact was the early 90s, and so they're a bit late to that party, but I like it nonetheless. If you're gonna lean in, lean in hard. P5, Hass pre-money gram. Haas obviously could have used the Haas tooling logo, but thank God they did not. This thing, simple, elegant, beautiful. Works great on the little TV graphics at the side of the screen. Absolutely nailed it. Haas, please apply the same level of talent to building cars. P4, as mentioned earlier, Williams current W. Elegant, simple, distinctive. It's a big W for a team named Williams. Given the logo, these angles and cutouts gives the team an excellent base to build upon for creating liveries and that sort of thing. Excellent job, Williams. To begin our podium in P3, Jordan, 2001. In my opinion, this logo is timeless. You could slap this on a sports car now and it would still look good. It's strong, it's bold, it's sexy. Oh, chef's kiss from me. P2, Ferrari, but uh, uh, not this one, this one. Ferrari obviously still use this logo on their road cars, but back in the early 90s, it was also the logo for the F1 team. And just, oh, just, oh, don't get me wrong. This is brilliant, but I like this. And now our top spot, P1, Coloni. It's got a big wolf. That's all I have to say. Other teams take note, big wolf. Jokes aside, this has everything. Great design, check. Great font, check. Simple, check. Memorable, check. For a team that had 53 did not pre-qualifies, 14 did not qualifies, 10 race retirements, and only four race finishes in its entire history, Cloney had no right going so hard with their logo. But they did it anyway! Why can't we have anything this good today? Why can't we have nice things anymore? Why am I stuck with this? Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I find it very interesting to look back over the history of our sport, particularly considering there's such a contrast between today's heavily controlled media empire Formula One and the wild west Formula One of the 80s and 90s. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you learned something new about this sport we love. If you like this video, leave a like down below to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Until that time though, I've been Mr. V and I'll see you guys later.